just as a quick reminder, uh, we are now brought to you by Equipped Creatures, the magic merch for magic fans. I got a little tired of not finding some cool little clean designs inspired by Magic the Gathering for merch, especially here in Canada. There's not a lot that ships across the state's border. Um, so we opened up our own magic merch shop. We've got keyword collections. We've got card collections. We've got planes location collections. Uh, we've got a fun set of Kamigawa locations. We've got a fun set of um, Zendikar locations so far. Everything is coming out as fast as we can put it out. Uh, we're as fast as we're designing these things. Um, so we're so excited to share this with the world and talk about cool Magic the Gathering merch. Uh, bonfire.com slash store slash equip. Uh, I'm going to put it in chat one more time. Shop.com. Bonfire.com slash shop slash equip for all of your cool Magic the Gathering merch inspired by the cards and the places we love in Magic. I love this Dockside Ramen one we designed. Very, very cool. Uh, this is my favorite one. By a long shot. It's one of my favorite cards. It's actually like the card I keep on the back of my phone. Because I am a big ramen fan. Um, yeah. Actually, you know what? Before we jump into blue, let's um, take one more quick break. I just need to give the pup... Um, I need to give the pup is... His piece of cheese um so i'm gonna post that in chat and i will be right back give me one quick sec All right, cheese, cheese has been had. Falls for it every time. So again, we are proud to share with the world Equip Creatures, um, merch for Magic fans, inspired by the locations and the cards and the, the features of this beautiful game that we love. Um, check it out. Get some merch. I implore you. Wear your pride. <laughs> All right, let's jump into blue. This is the full set review for March of the Machine. Every card is out. Let's dive in. The first blue card we've got is Artistic Refusal. Four blue blue for an instant with Convoke. So as a reminder, Convoke, uh, your creatures can help cast this spell. Each creature you tap while casting it pays for one colorless or one mana of that creature's specific color. So definitely keep that in mind.
guys hanging out in the kitchen. Um, so yeah, you can convoke this. It's four blue blue. Uh, choose one or both. Counter target spell or draw two cards, then discard a card. That's all right. We'll see. It'll come into play, I'm sure. Next up, we've got Assimilate Essence. One and a blue for an instant. Counter target creature or battle spell, unless its controller pays four. If they do, you incubate two. As a reminder, again, incubating means create an incubator token with two... 1-1 one, one counters on it, because it says incubate 2, you get 2 counters. Um, and it said the, the, the token reads, pay 2, transform this artifact. It transforms into a 0-0 zero, zero Phyrexian artifact creature. So when you transform it, it'll be a 2-2, two, two, and you'll be able to use that in combat the next turn. All right, next up we've got Astral Wingspan, four and a blue with Convoke, and it's it's an enchantment aura with Convoke. Enchant creature, when Astral Wingspan enters the battlefield, draw a card. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and has flying. I don't know why the image is like squished like this, but hopefully it won't be like that on the actual card. Uh, that's pretty good, plus two, plus two, and flying with Convoke, so you could essentially play this for free if you have enough creatures. That's not bad at all. Uh, then we've got Captive Weird. One blue for a 1-3 weird with Defender. Then you may pay three and a Phyrexian red to transform it into Completed Conjurer. A 3-3 three, three Phyrexian weird that reads, When this creature transforms into Completed Conjurer, exile the top card of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play that card. Pretty decent. Not too bad at all. Then we've got change the equation. One and a blue for an instant. Choose one. Counter target spell with mana value two or less. Or counter target red or green spell with mana value six or less. So this is a nice sideboard card um, to play against the red or green decks that you might come across if you're playing uh, best of threes. Otherwise, um, counter target spell with mana value two or less. Is not the best obviously if you play this on two um whatever your opponent is casting if you're on the play and you have two mana up when your opponent plays their second land um, you can counter anything they play but that's pretty much the only time this is ever going to be really good yeah i would definitely sideboard this in against red or green decks that's my not so hot take Next up, we've got Chrome Host Siege Shark. This is a two, f one, oh, sorry. Read the card, Wyatt, in order. Two and a blue for a two, four Phyrexian Shark with flying. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, incubate X, where X is that spell's mana value. So this is kind of like a throwback to Shark, um, shark Typhoon. You can obviously tell there's a shark with a, tornado in the background um but it's a an, it's a, attached to an actual creature instead of a enchantment and all you get is the incubation tokens which you then have to pay to transform so it's a little slower not as powerful but it's a nice little touch it's a nice little throwback i am a huge shark typhoon fan so i appreciate this nod to one of the best cards in magic Next up, we've got Corruption of Tawashi. Four and a blue for an enchantment. When Corruption of Tawashi enters the battlefield, incubate four. So you get an incubator token with four counters on it. Then whenever a permanent you control transforms or a permanent enters the battlefield under your control transformed, you may draw a card. Do this only once a turn. Not great. Five mana enchantment that doesn't do anything right away. Um, yeah, disturbing conversion. Oh no, this has got the Jace eyeball shooting out of their arm. One and a blue for an enchantment aura flash with flash. Oh, good. 
Enchant creature, when disturbing conversion enters the battlefield, each player mills two cards. Enchanted creature gets minus X minus O, where X is the number of cards in its controller's graveyard. So it's like a fear of de death or fear of dying or whatever that card was. Interesting. Uh, next up, we've got Ephra's Dispersal. Two and a blue for an instant. This spell costs two less to cast if it targets an attacking creature. Uh, return target creature to its owner's hand and then surveil two. This is going to be great. This is going to be awesome. This is a bounce spell that um, becomes one. I would love it if it was one mana, just period. But uh, I don't mind it costing two less um, to specifically target attacking creatures. The surveil two is going to be huge. Um, people don't prioritize and value surveil high enough. It would be cool if this was one blue mana and then it cost or you only get to surveil if you bounce an attacking creature. But I think either way, this is very playable and it's going to be um, popular. Next up, we've got Expedition Lookout. One in a blue for a 2-3 merfolk rogue creature with defender. As long as your opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, Expedition Lookout can attack as though it didn't have Defender and it can't be blocked. Damn. It's a 2-3 unblockable that goes in the mill build. I like that. And it's a common too. Eyes of Gataxius is next. Two and a blue for a sorcery. Incubate three. Draw a card. That's not bad. Incubating three... It's 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 hard to tell how powerful the incubation system is going to be from here. I've seen a little bit of this set be played so far thanks to our lovely neighbors uh, on the island at Loading Ready Run who did their pre-pre-release last weekend. Um, and it seems like the Phyrexian artifact creatures are going to play a big role, but we haven't seen enough of the game played yet to really justify that as a grand statement so we'll just have to wait and see i like it. this card is okay it's sorcery speed which kind of is a bummer it'd be nice if you could play this at instant speed at the end of your opponent's turn or something but we'll see next up we have fairy mastermind for those of you that don't know every world champion gets to put their likeness and help they don't get to design the card outright, but they get to help design a card uh, for the coming year or it for a coming set. Usually it's about a year later. Um, and this is Yuta Takahashi's card, who was the um, 27th world champion. Uh, so not this past fall, but the fall before that, Yuta Takahashi won the digital only at home event for the world championship uh and he played marvelously and of course he was known when he first became pro uh for his fairy deck so obviously he puts his face um and helps design a fairy card it makes a lot of sense and this card looks actually dope uh so fairy mastermind is one in a blue for a 2-1 fairy rogue with flash and flying whenever an opponent draws their second card each turn you draw a card and then you can pay three and a blue. Each player draws a card. That's not bad. It's not bad at all. Next up, we've got Furtive Analyst. This is a cool piece of art. I love that. Two and a blue for a 1-4 Human Wizard with Vigilance. Pay two and tap it to draw a card, then discard a card. That's not great. Next up, we've got Halo Charge Scab. Oh, zombies are dipping into the Halo now. That's not good. Four and a blue for a 4-4 zombie. When Halo Charge Scab enters the battlefield, each player mills two cards. Then you may put an instant sorcery or battle card from your graveyard on top of your library. I mean, it's okay, I guess. I feel like that's this is going to be a, a pretty good card in Limited. Not going to see a lot of play. It's too expensive. 
Um, yeah. Maybe if it said if you put any card on top of your library from your graveyard, this would be playable and constructed in a zombies deck, but I feel like at that cost, just getting an instant and sorcery back um, just adds too many steps. We've got our first blue battle. You're gonna you're gonna know when someone draws a battle because they're gonna do this. So they're gonna they're gonna draw the card into their hand. And they're gonna do one of these. They're gonna go. And you're like, oh, you drew a battle. Nice. Good for you. So always look out for your opponent's head tilting. It's like when they did the double cards, the dual cards, those were always fun. Um, so this first bla battle, wow. This first battle says is called Invasion of Arcavios. Looks like it's a Strixhaven school, maybe. Three blue blue for a seven health battle. Again, as a reminder, battles are a new card type. Um, this battle subtype is Siege. Um, there's going to be multiple battles in the future if these do well. Um, and then they might not be Sieges. So keep in mind that the rules, rules text on these cards are for Sieges specifically, uh, not for battles specifically. So you have to follow the subtype. Um, a Siege enters the battlefield. Choose an owner... Um, choose an opponent to protect it you and others may attack it when it's defeated exile it then cast it transformed um so it's like giving your opponent a planeswalker with no abilities it's something that they have to protect uh because the flip side when you defeat it you get something usually pretty special uh you also get an atb ability when invasion of archivios enters the battlefield search your library graveyard and outside the game for an instant or sorcery card you own reveal it and put it into your hand if you search your library this way shuffle and then it's seven has seven health to defeat it and it turns into invocation of the founders an enchantment whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell from your hand you may copy it you may choose new targets for the copy interesting so this will be fun in uh, a spells matter deck because you can put like mass destruction. Um, I'm thinking of like Brotherhood's End in your sideboard. And then in game one, if your opponent's playing a lot of artifacts, you can play this, grab Brotherhood's End from your sideboard, cast that. Not bad. It's expensive and it it'll take a while to knock it down, but I think it's all right. The next battle is about Invasion of Kamigawa. When Invasion of Kamigawa enters the battlefield, tap target artifact or creature an opponent controls and put a stun counter on it. Stun counters are um, a counter put on permanence. Uh, they do not become untapped at the beginning of that owner's, that permanence owner's untap step. Instead, you remove the stun counter and then the next turn they will untap. Um... Invasion of Kamigawa has four health. Once you defeat it, it becomes Rooftop Saboteurs. Two, three Moonf Moonfolk Ninjas with flying. When Rooftop Saboteurs deals combat damage to a player or battle, draw a card. Not bad. Not bad. It's a little expensive to get off the ground, but I like the idea of having uh, Saboteurs flying in the air that draw you cards. Um, next up, we've got Invasion of Segovia. Two and a blue for a four health battle. in a uh, Siege, sorry. When Invasion of Segovia enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one blue Kraken creature tokens with Trample. Neat. And then once you do four damage to it, it turns into Cadis, Sea Tyrant of Segovia. A 3-3 three, three legendary creature serpent. Non-creature spells you cast have Convoke. At the beginning of your end step, untap up to four target creatures. This is going to be a banger. For three mana, get two one ones. You deal four damage to it, and you get to keep untapping stuff at the end of your turn. 
that is going to be great. Uh, next up, we've got Invasion of Vryn. When Invasion of... Uh, it's three and a blue for a siege. When Invasion of Vryn enters the battlefield, draw three cards, then discard a card. Not too bad. When you knock it down from four to zero, it becomes Overloaded Mage Ring, an artifact with pay one, tap it, sacrifice it, copy target spell you control. That's not great. <laughs> it's nice to pay... Pay four, uh, draw three cards, discard a card. That's that's okay. That's a pretty good value. Um, and then you sacrifice this thing to copy something you've cast. Not too bad. Then we've got Jin Cataxias. Three blue blue for a 5-5 five, five Phyrexian Praetor. Legendary. With Ward 2. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell with mana value 3 or greater, draw a card. I mean, that doesn't happen all too often. And then you can pay 3 and a blue, exile Jin Kataxis, then return it to the battlefield, transformed, activate only as a sorcery, and only if you have 7 or more cards in hand. Oh. That's going to be difficult. And then it switches, it flips into the Great Synthesis. Chapter 1 is draw cards equal to the number of cards in your hand. You have no maximum hand size for as long as you control the Great Synthesis. Chapter 2 is return all non-Phyrexian creatures to their owner's hands. Chapter 3, you may cast any number of spells from your hand without paying their mana costs. Exile the Great Synthesis, then return it to the battlefield. Front face up. And then you return it to Jin Kataxias, and you do this over and over and over again. So you have to have seven cards in hand to transform him. And then you draw seven more cards or more. So you have 14 cards in hand. Then you bounce all non-Phyrexian creatures to their owner's hands. And then you can cast anything in your hand without paying its mana cost. So you just unload your whole hand. That's kind of crazy. I mean, I think this is way better than the Elish Norn card, but I might be wrong. Uh, next up, we have a Meeting of Minds. Three and a blue for an instant with Convoke. Draw two cards. That's not bad. So you could tap a couple tokens and, uh, you know, pay two to draw two or pay one to draw two. That's not bad. Moment of Truth. One and a blue for an instant. Uh, look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of those cards into your hand, one into your graveyard, and one on the bottom of your library. So this is kind of like pseudo brainstorm-ish. Um, the fact that you have to put one of them on the bottom of your library kind of sucks. I wish you could put the other two or one of them on the top of your library. But I guess if you like if you don't need a land, you always just put the land on the bottom of your library. Who knows? It's a neat card. It's also a big story moment, so I don't mind that. Next up we have Negate, another huge story moment. One and a blue for an instant counter target non-creature spell. Just a standard negate with a cool art of a Johnny getting unphyrexianed. Out of all of the planeswalkers that they saved from being completed, a, a Johnny and Nissa were not the two I was hoping for. Next up, we've got Oculus Whelp. Three and a blue for a 3 2 Phyrexian Dragon. It has flying. As long as you control a transform permanent, Oculus Whelp has when Oculus Whelp dies, draw a card. That's kind of weird, but it's not terrible. A 3-2 for 4 with flying is okay. Uh, next up, we've got Omen Hawker. One blue for a 1-1 one, one Cephalid Advisor. You can tap it to add one colorless and one blue. Spend this mana only to activate abilities. So this would be interesting because all of the transform abilities um, cost colorless and colored mana. So... 
Omen Hawker is a really neat card to put in those decks. I don't know how it's going to play in the long run. I don't know if this lives very much in limited. I think it's going to be circumstantial for sure. Um, but I also think that there's a small chance that something in the constructed formats really likes to play Omen Hawker. It's also a fantastic commander card. Um, next up, we've got Oracle of Tragedy. This is cool art, too. One in a blue for a 1-3 human wizard. When Oracle of Tragedy enters the battlefield or dies, choose one. Draw a card, then discard a card. Shuffle up to four target cards with mana value three or greater from your graveyard into your library. Not bad. Uh, next up, we've got Order of the Mirror. One in a blue for a 2-1 human knight. And it has three and a white Phyrexian to transform. Pardon me. To transform Order of the Mirror. And it transforms into Order of the Alabaster Host. A 3-3 three, three Phyrexian knight. When Order of the Alabaster Host becomes blocked by a creature, that creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Not bad. Next up, we've got Preening Champion. Oh, look how cool this Peacock Knight is. That's so cool. Uh, two and a blue for a 2-2 Bird Knight with flying. When Preening Champion enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 blue and red elemental creature token. That's really neat. I love that art. Next up, we've got Protocol Knight. Three and a blue for a 3-4 Human Knight. When Protocol Knight enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. Put a stun counter on that creature if you control another knight. So they're really pushing this knight build between white and blue. Interesting. Uh, then we've got Ro Rona, Herald of Invasion. One and a blue for a 1-3 human wizard legendary creature. Whenever you cast a legendary spell, untap Rona, Herald of Invasion. You can tap Rona to draw a card, then discard a card. Pay five and a Phyrexian Black to transform Rona. And Rona transforms into Tolarian Obliterator, a 5-5 five, five Phyrexian Wizard with Trample. Whenever a source deals damage to Rona, that source's controller exiles a card from their hand at random. If it's a land card, you may put it onto the battlefield under your control. Otherwise, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. That is intense. I was going to say that this card is going to be a phenomenal addition to the Legendary Matters um, Esper deck. Um, as something that just like filters your cards. Every time you cast a Legendary, you get to untap her. And then you tap it and draw and discard. It's pretty great synergy. Um, but all things considered, like I think this is just a banger of a card, period. Not even in the Legendary Matters Esper deck. But especially in the Legendary Matters Esper deck. That's going to be nuts. Um, next up, we have Saiba Cryptomancer. One in a blue for an 01 Moonfolk Ninja with Flash and Backup 1. And it's, their ability is Hexproof. So you can flash this in, give Hexproof to something else, and a 1-1 one, one counter. That's pretty great. I like this a lot. Cyber Cryptomancer is going to be a sleeper hit. Mark my words. This is a sleeper hit, especially in Limited. This is going to save a lot of games, turn a lot of tides. Um, keep your eyes out for Cyber Cryptomancer. Next up, we have C double, two blue blue for an instant. This spell can't be copied, bummer, but you can choose one. If an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, you may choose both. Copy target spell, you may choose new targets for the copy, so you can twin Inferno something, or create a token that's a copy of target creature. That's pretty cool. Um. And you can do both of them if someone has eight or more cards in their graveyard. That's amazing. This this mill deck is going to be lots of fun to play. 
Uh, next up, we have Sky Clave Aerialist. One and a blue for a 2 1 Merfolk Scout with flying. Pay four and a Phyrexian green to transform it into Sky Clave Invader. A 2 4 Phyrexian Merfolk Scout with flying. When this creature transforms, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land, you may put it onto the battlefield. If you don't put that card onto the battlefield, put it into your hand. Interesting. That's not bad. 2-1 with flying on turn 2 is not bad. Next up we have Stasis Field. 1 and a blue for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature has base power and toughness. 0-2 has defender and loses all other abilities. I... I like that. I don't like that it gives it defender. Um, I still think I like witness protection better. But Stasis Field is going to be good. Uh, after that, we've got Temporal Cleansing. Three and a blue for a sorcery with Convoke. The owner of target non-land permanent puts it into their library second from the top or on the bottom. So if they don't want to see it again, they choose the bottom. If they do want to see it again, they can put it second from the top. That's all right. It's a very Teferi thing to do. Thunderhead Squadron is next. Five and a blue for a three, four human knight with Convoke and Flying not bad. Tidal Terror. Ooh, more fishies. Four blue blue for a 5-6 octopus. Whenever Tidal Terror attacks, you may tap two other untapped creatures you control. If you do, Tidal Terror can't be blocked this turn. And it has Island Cycling. So this is our Island, our Cycling card for blue. I guess every color is going to have a, a, a Land Cycling card. Uh, I like this. I like this more for my Runo Stormkirk commander deck than I do for Constructed or anything, but uh, it's fine. Next up, we have Transcendent Message. X, blue, 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 blue with Convoke, so it can be cheaper. Uh, draw X cards. That's not too bad. Next up, we've got Wicked Slumber, three and a blue for an instant with Convoke. Tap up to two target creatures, put a stun counter on either of them, then put a stun counter on either of them. So they worded it this way specifically to let someone put both stun counters on one of the two. So you tap two things, but only one of them is a real problem. You put both of the stun counters on that thing instead of putting one on each. And that's why they had to word it weirdly like that. Um, that's fair. I like that card a lot. I like that it has Convoke. So in a pinch, like, you know, oh, they put something crazy on the battlefield. I can't attack into it. So I'm going to use my creatures to Convoke this out. I think that for someone who plays a lot of Drago, being able to use the things I have in play to cast other things um, is huge. Uh, yeah, I like that. Next up, we have Xerix Strobe Knight. Oh, look at this guy skating through the multiverse. Two and a blue for a 2-2 two -two human knight with flying and vigilance. Tap Xerix Strobe Knight to create a 2-2 two -two white and blue knight creature token with vigilance. On activate only if you've cast two or more spells this turn. Interesting. Not too bad. Cool art. Next up, we've got Zephyr Singer. Two blue blue for a 3-4 Siren Pirate. Oh, interesting combo. With Convoke, Flying and Vigilance. When Zephyr Singer enters the battlefield, put a flying counter on each creature that convoked it. Wow. That is huge. You're basically just setting up to go over top of your opponent's board the turn after. You can tap everything you own. You can tap four other creatures. All of them get flying now. That's great. That's a cool card. Very cool card. And then last for blue, we have Zelfir and Shapecraft. One in a blue for an instant. Target creature has base power and toughness 4-3 until end of turn and draw a card. That's pretty good. I like that. Um, I think Rona is 
by far the most intriguing card. I really like the uh, Segovia. Um, battle. Also, the Kamigawa battle is pretty good. And of course, the shout out to my boy Shark Typhoon. Um, I like that one as well, but I think that Rona is huge. It's going to be huge. Cyber Cryptomancer is going to be great in limited as well, um, but Rona is going to be a deadly card. This. This replaces so many things um, for the better that it's actually going to be bonkers how important this card is. This is by far my pick for best blue card. Um, and that's it for blue. I really like some of the art on these. Um, I like a, a lot of the way some of these play. I'm not a huge... Um, Azorius fan as many people have tried to convince me to play Azorius control rather than Demir control um, and I I like the knight build that they're going for with these two colors but I think that I'm more excited for for other aspects of the blue cards I like the knight thing but I think that's more other people's jams people that like the soldiers deck are going to love this new knight synergy um, 